Welcome back to another Pixie Maker tutorial. Today is a Patreon request for Midnight Darkness who wants to see how to use text tags in PGM. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so I made a text tag sample project that will show everything in detail. You can get this on my samples pack three, just right here, you can download it. And so this is going to go into the official plugins only. It's not gonna go into Joe's action text. Now, if you want Joe's action text, there's really three different ones for his, and he has them laid out really well in his help uh, english.txt, for example. There's the use of the backslash L and there's a backslash D. It says the example of what you need to use and it shows some examples. Backslash D is to change the display. And then we also see that the variable is a little different if you wanna use it in his. It's a lowercase V instead of a capital V. So those are the, really the only specifics about Joe's. Now let's dive into the official ones. All right, so first off, what is a text tag? How do we use them? The text tags are going to be used inside your text. So for example, I'm in the resources text tab. I mean, I'm just selecting one of the text resources here and you can see that I have some text right here. And then you can see that I'm also using this kind of a little code block and that is what the text tag is, okay? So it's to do something different. So for example, in this one, I'm using a common variable. So I'm showing a common variable and I'm showing specifically the background music volume adjust. And what I mean by that is it's in this variable right here and it's down here called background, the BGM volume adjust. All right, so let's go back to the text. So I'm showing that you can do this by a name or ID. So for instance, the name of it, you can just copy and paste the name right here. And then the ID, this is the ID of that common variable. All right, so the real question is, is how do we get that ID? All right, we know the name, so we know how easy that is, but let's just say that you have a created variable and you want it to be, you want to change the name throughout the project. You don't have a specific name for it yet. And how do you know what the ID is so that you can change the name whenever, and, but the ID is still the same? So how you do that is you can go to plugins tab here. Now I added a reset plugin just for ease of, of showing this, but in order to click on the show log down here, you have to have a plugin installed. So that could be as simple as just add a plugin and you just don't add one, okay? And then you can show log right here. It's gonna bring up this log of everything that's going on in the editor. Then you're going to go back to resources, go to variables, and you're gonna unselect the one that you want. And that way that's just the most recent info can be up here. You're gonna then clear the log, all right? And then you're going to select the variable that you want. And you're gonna see that there's an on selected ID list change, 24, all right? So that's how you're gonna know the variable ID. There's also a couple other spots right here, 24, 24. You can see that these are all just places where it's showing that ID. Now, if you had a another a custom one right here, I could just click on this and you can see that this is 2001. So I would put 2001 as the ID, and then I could change that name to whatever I wanted, if that's the ID that I wanted to use. So that's how you, that is uh, one of the easiest ways to get IDs in Pixel Maker. And then you can minimize this right here, it just docks right here, and then you can bring it up whenever you want it. Now, if you're trying to save the game, I think you have to close this, or else it will keep thinking that the game is not saved. So just do keep in mind that when you're trying to close the program down and save it, you, you'll probably have to close this one first. All right, so let's go back to the text here. And one thing that I just want to point out here is that the zero represents that you're looking for a common variable. That's what you would preface that this is going to be a common variable that I want to show. All right, so now let's move on to object variables. All right, and this is going to have a few different setups. So the first one we're going to do is by the name. So you can see right here, I put in text tag control. If you go to the objects tab, it is text tag control. All right, pretty simple. And we wanted the HP variable. Now I just did this one by name and then I did the next one by ID so that you can see both are used. So on this one, we wanted it by the object ID. So the first one is the object ID. And how you get that is you can right click, click on the object settings and right here, object ID number one. So that's what I put in the tag right here. I wanted the first object. I wanted the second variable. Now, where do I get these variables from? How did I get this variable ID? Well, you could use the show editor log but there's also a website, or not a website, but a link to standard enemies variable switch ID, which is really handy when you're doing these things and other scripting. You can come down here to object variable IDs and you can see HP is ID two. You can see that real quickly, I got it and I just put in two right there. The next thing that I wanted to show is how to do decimals. You can see that this five has decimals on it. And so I'm using the ID with decimals on this one. 
And this is basically the same thing as up here, except for I'm adding the decimal count right here. Matter of fact, you can see it adjust in real time if you change the numbers. You can go three, you can go five, you can go, I, I don't know how many you can go, but two is, you know, a typical one or two. And so you can see that you can add decimals on these. The next thing to show is the text size. So you can see that you can put in a backslash S, then you can put in the size of the font. So if you put in the size like this without a plus, like you can see right here, or a minus, you can see that it just sets the font to that big. And it's just, it's a direct set. Now, the thing is, is you'll have to cancel that out by using just an empty brackets that will put it back to normal size font. You can see I did this with the small font right here. I just set it to a, a font. But then you can see right here where it says you can also plus or minus, which shows you how I'm plusing it and then minusing it. And you can plus the current font's position by four, or you can minus it, just like in this over here. Let's see if I can uh, uh, see it over here, just move that. Yeah, you can see that I'm minusing it a little bit. So it can even be set via variable, all right? So you have, you can see that I'm backslashing S, okay? And then I'm adding another text tag, or there's the start of the tag, and then I'm adding another text tag in between there, all right? And that is actually the size that I'm thinking. So I have a variable right here that says text size huge, which is 50. And so what I do is I set this variable word right here and, and the period, I guess, to that huge size. So you can see how this can make your text a little more dynamic or, or things like this. You can use a text tag inside a text tag. And so I wanted to show that with this example right here. And moving on, we can go to color. Now this one is pretty straightforward. You can basically use the RGBA and it's a hash, or it's, sorry, <laughs> a backslash C. So then you can use the RBGA numbers or you can use the hexadecimals for these values. And remember, these mine the hexadecimals won't be able to because you've got letters in them but these colors can easily be they'd have to be single but they could easily be variables that you stuff in a variable instead of the uh, a set number like this you can see that we can just change colors pretty simple and moving on this one was particularly interesting is you can actually show a text resource name or uh, sorry, a name, I, that was the example I did, but you can show a text resource and it can be as long or as big as you want it. It will show all of it. So for instance, I have this where I'm saying uh, you can show different texts. For example, the name Baz came from another text resource. You can see the name and then I used backslash capital T seven and that came from another text resource. Now here is the, the name that I, well, actually, let me see here. It's a red one. So this one, I use this one right here. Name one is what I show right here. Now, how did I get the ID? Simply via this editor um, script log. I cleared it, I selected the name, and you can see right here, it says ID, text ID is seven. So that's how I got the text ID. All right, now it's not just a text ID, it can also be name. So you can also show it via text name. So you can see that I just type in the name and you can see I have a text resource called name, and that showed the yellow baz, which this is using the yellow baz color. And then lastly, this can be used to uh, show variables for like a name or something like this. So you can see that I used a variable which had the ID number for the text resource. So you can see that variable, the variable ID is eight, and this name two is, is the text ID is eight. So these ones all kind of go together in showing on how to use text resources inside your editor. Now there is one caveat down here at the bottom. It says you can only show a text resource one text per text resource. What I mean by that is if I take this T7 right here and I just copy paste it right here, it will not show up again. So you basically can only use it once in a text resource. So do be careful of that. If you're using this for a naming system or something, you can only have one name per text resource. So if you want the other NPC to say the name again in a conversation, you're gonna have to start a new dialogue for that. Now moving on, we can actually go one step further and show a object name. You can see right here, it says object name is text tag control. And all I did was a backslash uh, capital O and, that, and then the ID 
of the object, which again, we knew was one. And boom, it's going to show that name. Now you could again, use variables, you can use anything that you want in this pretty cool uh, setup. And then so I just included some additional information. So for instance, variable values do not update dynamically like show variable. So for instance, when you are showing this, for instance, this uh, showing this BGM, let's just say, and you are, you show it once in a show text like this, and then you just leave it. It will not update if, if you can update the volumes in this particular, in this particular case that we're talking about. If you could update the volumes, it will not show. You would have to show it, you can go to the object here. So instead of showing it as this, you would have to combine it with this variable right here instead. So you'd have to have one for the show text portion of it. So, and then probably it would be this, and then this, the name and the ID, and then you'd have to make another one with the variable of it. And then you'd have to position it to make it look like it's in the right spot. So these ones do not dynamically update. The variable one is what you want for dynamic updates. Now that can't be said that this can't update. For instance, you could have a loop going on where it's constantly showing and unshowing this. Make sure that you use hide on action change if you're doing a loop like that, which I generally like to use this uh, anyway. So yeah, you'll wanna consider that if you're, if you're doing it. So you, you can make it dynamic, but you're gonna have to do one of those action loops that are pretty common in Pixel Game Maker. And going back, so here's the next one. If you need help finding variable IDs, you can use the show log. Example on how to use that is on my scripting made easy. So that is true. You can go to my scripting made easy right here. And let's uh, bring it up a bit. And you can go down here to show editor log. And it's going to kind of teach you how to use it and better do it. And then also examples of how to find IDs. So it's going to show you where in the text editor.log your IDs will be. Now this is very uh, useful for um, text IDs that we showed and control IDs that I got asked about recently. So I'll just include that in there as well. And so, yeah. So this sample project, basically you just click play and you can just press space and see through the various uh, ones like this. And it just loops through them all. So I hope that this sample project is useful. You can just grab this sample project. You can come and see whichever one you want to get the uh, info that you need, or you can just view this video however you want to do it. So if there's any questions, comments below, Steam Forms Discord, we'll get you figured out. That said, I'll see you at the next video.